Okay, so now some other questions. Now this question is... Okay. It's not here. Ah, it's here. If a believer backslides, okay, if a believer backslides and stops going to church and renounces God, will he still go to heaven? I repeat, huh? if a believer backslides, you know it's backslide. What's backslide? Slide backwards. Alright, slide backwards means instead of going on with Christ in the Christian walk, go backwards into the world. For example, backslide. Alright, so the Bible describes like an animal trying to climb up the hill. Then the, anim the, floor, the ground is very slippery, the animal slides back instead of going forward. Understand backslide? You want to backslide? In your Christian walk, do you want to backslide? What should we only do? Forward slide. <laughs> Move forward, alright? Move forward. So climb upwards. So he said, if a believer backslides and stops going to church and renounces God, what does it mean to renounce God? Caleb, what does it mean to renounce God? Not sure. Renounce means say, I don't believe in God anymore. Means say, I don't believe in this God. Okay? Renounce. Chloe, Ken, what is renounce? No, I just explained. What is renounce? Because you're not paying attention. Renounce means I say, I don't believe in God anymore. Okay? So he backslide. Three things, huh? So this is a very important question. Number one, backslide. You know what is that? Means... Um, then stop going to church stop coming to church and then renounce God so you say a believer does these three things the question is can he can he what can, will he go to heaven will he go to heaven okay so backslide means you stop studying God's word, you uh, disobey God, you go back to your sinful, uh, your sins that you used to love in the past. That's backslide. Ken? Alright, grace. Ken, backslide. Okay, backslide. And then stop coming to church. Parents say, let's go to church. No, I do not want to go to church, for example. Okay, I do not want to go to church. And don't want to come for worship, don't want to come for Bible study, don't want to come for prayer meeting. I don't want to go to church anymore. And even say that I don't believe in God anymore. I don't want to believe in God. I don't want to believe in God. Can the person go to heaven? What do you think, Grace? Will the person go to heaven? You think? Mm, playing with your hair. Not sure. What do you think, Anna? Help your sister. No. no. But it's a believer, you know? It's a believer. Why do you say no? <coughs> because you don't want to believe in God anymore. You don't want to believe in, in God anymore. Um, what do you think, Cornelius? So Cornelius say number one, the person may not be a true believer. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? He simply believes in God, he wants to go to heaven, but he don't want to repent of his sins. He wants to go back to his sins, go back to the thing that he likes, or just choose what he likes that is sinful, that he knows is against God's word. So because, are you saying, so he was never a true believer, believer in the first place? Is that what you're saying? In the first place. Can someone say that I am a believer? Come to church, study the Bible, and then one day say, I, I love this sin too much. I love this sin too much. So, then stop reading the Bible, stop coming to church, and then even say, now, this sin I love so much that I even am willing to say, I will say I renounce God. Hey Enoch, how come your English is so good? You ask this question, you know. You know what's renounce? Ah? I didn't say 
Okay. Uh, such a deep question from Enoch. Alright? So Enoch's question. So Enoch asked this. Can a person come to church and all like that, but actually is not a true believer in the first place? Is it possible? Is it possible, Shin? Is it possible? That a person say he's a believer, but do all this, it means that he was not a true believer in the first place. Is it possible? Not sure. Say again. Could have been believer. Okay, so Shane is could have been believer. Could have been a true believer. Is it? Could have been a true believer before. So there are two answers. What do you think? Jennifer, what do you think? Could he have been a true believer before? Could he have been not a true believer before? Are both cases possible? Not possible. Okay. So now, of course, there's still this question now. Will he go to heaven? Maybe I'll ask the, ask the adults. Uh, adults. Adults. Sing uh, Yun. Sing Yuan. It's Sing Yun. Sing Yun. Sing Yun. Okay, both are possible. But in the case of the believer, uh, he might say that in, in the moment, but maybe uh, he'll have the Holy Spirit to Okay, can you hear that? So, so Sing Yun said, Sing Yun said that both are possible. He could have been a true believer and said all these things. Sing Yun also said that he could have been not a true believer and said all these things. Do you agree? Do you agree, Jeremy? You think children's question very easy, right? <laughs> so now you know. <laughs> I don't. I don't think. <laughs> oh, you watch your work very carefully, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The children are listening. So why do you think? So, I, I, if he was a true believer, I don't think he would. Unless in the moment, yes, but if he's a true believer, then he will eventually like yes. But Sing Yun. Sing Yun said <laughs> he'll be better back. Okay. Yeah, but if not, then okay. he's a true believer. Alright, so Enoch. <coughs> yeah? But the Uncle Jeremy say. <laughs> okay, Jeremy say. Okay. Uncle Jeremy say. Possible. Maybe it's a true believer. Maybe it's a true believer. And if a true believer says all these things, one day, the Holy Spirit will convict him, one day he will still come back to God. Okay? He won't renounce God um, forever. And Uncle Jeremy also say that if in the case he was, he was not a true believer, he's not a true believer, then what happened, Jeremy? If not true believer, then <coughs> he won't be going to heaven because he was never truly saved. Okay, place. so Uncle Jeremy, uh, Uncle Jeremy say that if he were not a true believer, he could say all these things. And because in the first place, he was not a believer. He just say he is. Okay, so um, Isaac, who goes to heaven? True or false believer? True believers, only true believers will go to heaven. So, if he was not a true believer, you know, very clear. False believers will never go to heaven. You can say, I believe in God, come to church and everything. You will still not go to heaven. Okay? You must be a true believer. And if he's a true believer, or rather the other way. Now, a false believer, okay, I'll put it here, false. A false believer can one day finally say, I like this sin, I don't go to church anymore, and I say I don't believe in this God anymore. I'm willing to renounce my belief, okay? Okay? Now, what about, is there a fourth case? Is there a fourth case? Howard, is there a fourth case, you think? The question is, <laughs> the question is, well, everybody learn, learn, learn uh, Ignatius, uh. 
<laughs> is there a possible fourth case of this situation where the person say he backslides, he stopped going to church, and he say I renounce God? Is there a fourth case of such a person that might go to heaven? But we know, we know. Uh, let me be very clear. Uh, no misunderstanding. False believer, grace, if it's great. Faith, that's faith. Faith. Will false believer go to heaven? No. No. Very clear. True believer will go to heaven. But is there something that is kind of like in between? Just wait. Um, maybe they were not a true believer in the first place and then after all that happened. <laughs> yes. Alright. Maybe initially was a false believer. Hmm? Initially is a false believer. Then do all say all these things. But then one day, one day, one day he might become a true believer and then turn to God and be safe. Yes, Noah. What if like is there a true believer and he backs like okay. a true believer and he's still backs like Okay, so Noah have a uh, additional question. What happened is a true believer and the true believer backslide. Can a true believer, a backslided true believer go to heaven? Caleb, can a backslided true believer go to heaven? If he repents. What happens if, okay, what happens if, if it is a true believer, then he backslides. Okay, maybe for example, he, um, at that time, he was tempted and he loved computer games, bad computer games. Right, then he loves to play, he loves to play. But every time when he's playing, he knows that it is wrong. It is not good. Okay, in his heart, he knows it's wrong. And he have not repent. Maybe I'm talking to who? Caleb. He didn't repent. He didn't repent. So he's playing, 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 playing. He knows this is wrong. He didn't repent. One playing, playing, playing. Then he didn't see the big hole on the ground. And he walked to and then he died. Will he go to heaven? Don't know. Okay, so that's a good question. True believers will go to heaven. Can true believers backslide? Yes. Okay? Depends what you define by backslide. Huh? If you backslide, you commit horrendous sin, you murder people, you kill people, you're very vicious and all that. Are you a true believer? You, I don't think you can say you're a true believer, alright? So you backslide, but all the while the true believer in his heart will know this is wrong, this is sin, I must repent, I must repent. By the time, not willing to repent, still, still in the sin, alright Caleb? Now, if he is a true believer, sometimes we can fall into that. Is it good or bad, Caleb? Not good, right? But if he dies, he will still go to heaven, okay? He will still go to heaven. True believers. Now, let me ask Noah. Let me ask Adult. Let me ask Adult. Alex, why, should, why do we believe that true believer, even though backslided at that stage, dies, get a heart attack, will still go to heaven? Why? Why do we believe that? Uh, God will give him opportunity to repent. God will give him opportunity to repent. Uh, this one didn't. Just die. Because <laughs> it is. God will always give him away. God will give him away. So some, some believe that God will always give him an opportunity to repent. Now sometimes people fall into sin and then they're driving on the road and then the car, another car smashed into him and then he died. Has there been time where God takes away a believer's life because they live in disobedience? Yes. God wants to end your, your chastisement ends. Okay, God will, God will take you home. Okay, so sometimes can be. But the question is this, Pay. why do we believe that a true believer, definition of true believer. Hey, what's a true believer? True believer. Hmm. Elected. Yeah, what's a true believer? Uh, being elected. An elected person, okay. But what, when you say true believer, what does the person, what has the person done? He accepted Christ. Accepted Christ and his faith is based on what? Based on his faith, based on God. Based on God alone, right? Based on what Jesus paid for his sins, right? Is his faith based on, if I am a good Christian, then I go to heaven? Caleb, we go to heaven because we are a good Christian, or we go to heaven because Jesus died for our sins? 
because Jesus died for our sins. So because we believe salvation is by grace, correct? Salvation is by grace. So we may backslide and commit sin and then die at that time if you are a true believer because Jesus' work is what saves us, correct? Huh? But let me ask you this. Um, faith, faith, grace. Great faith. Can a true believer say this? I'm going to heaven, I believe in Jesus. Yay, now I can sin all I want. Well, I like your voice. Your voice is very strong. No, yes. Why no? Um, it's like when they say, it's like, um, like I can sin all I want. That's just not right. Yes, a person who says, I want to sin all I want, but I believe in Jesus, cannot be a true believer. Alright? It's a false believer. Their mouth can say, I'm a Christian and come, come to church, but in the heart, all the while sinning. Maybe secret sin even. Do you have secret sins? You have secret sin? Anyone have secret sins? Wow, all the kids like that. <laughs> no one there to look, look me in the eye. We all have secret sins. But this person said, I really don't care. I have all my secret sins. I love my secret sins. Uh, as long as no one knows, it's okay. It's very doubtful, the salvation. Now, young, young ones, adults as well. If you are a person who claims to be a Christian, but when you sin, there is no conviction of sin, you really don't care, you're very happy to continue, and, and as long as no one knows, it's fine. You only repent if, if only if because someone might find out. You must check your salvation, understand that. Caleb, remember that. A true believer will always know, even when he backslides, I am wrong, I must return to God. I must return to God. But he may continue in a while, right? So a true believer that backslide, will he go to heaven? Who asked? Noah. If he's a true believer, yes. But what will happen when he's on earth? What will happen? Shane, what will happen? A true believer backslide, don't want to repent. What will happen to him? He'll be chastised? In, in what way? Why? Okay, so Shane, are you, are you Uncle Edward's son? Yes. Yes, right? <laughs> Edward thing, Edward thing, right? You're his son. Now, if Shane, your dad said, do this, and then you constantly disobey him. Okay, you constantly disobey him. Especially when you're young. What would your dad do? Well, now family secret come up. <laughs> what would your dad do? He would? Scold. scold you, and sometimes he might cane you when you're young, right? Yes, sir. Okay, now you know. <laughs> He might cane you, right? Will he continue to let you to be naughty and do all sorts of sinful things? He will act, correct? So, uh, Caleb, a true believer can backslide, but because he's saved by Jesus Christ, work, not by his being a good Christian, he can go to heaven. But Caleb, is it good for a Christian to live like that? Not good. Is it good for you to constantly to be a disobedient child? Not good. Because you know daddy will do what? God Daddy will deal with you, right? So Christian, yes, might go to heaven, but God will deal. But sometimes God deal, 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 and you still don't want to repent. What might God do? Ada. What might God do? Might take your life. God might take your life. Why does God take your life? Ben, Cho. Why would God take the Christian's life? Because you are useless witness to Him. You are useless to Him. If you got a pen, you bought the pen to be used for writing, and the pen don't work, no ink. Alright? Would you keep it? Any use? No use. What will you do? Throw it away. Right? God will take you home. God will take you home. So don't fool around, be backslided, and think, as long as I'm going to heaven, Lord, I don't repent, I don't repent. Maybe tomorrow I repent, alright? Or Lord, maybe when after these things happen, then I repent. If God keeps showing you, and you don't want to repent, remember in Corinthians, God says that some of them partake of the Holy Communion, what? Un -sing -yun. Un unworthily, is guilty of the blood and body of Christ. And will have what? Dem damnation. Damnation. Alright? I remember I asked you once, why you don't take Holy Communion? Because I'm baptized. Oh good. Because of the damnation thing. <laughs> the damnation thing. 
And God said, because of that, many of you, what? Many of you sleep. What is sleep? What is sleep, uh, Isaac? Isaac. Many of them disobey God and God says, oh, you, you disobey me and you somehow, you take the Holy Communion, I put you to sleep. What does it mean? Ah, makes you sleep. <laughs> what does it mean? It means God take their life. Christian is called sleep. Understand that? It's not, so the Christian will sleep. Does it happen? It happened in the church, in the New Testament church. Who experienced very severe chastisement before? No one, ah? Well, also holy, ah? Huh? Me, I have. I remember when I was a young Christian. How will God warn you? Let me ask. Uh, Kai, how does God warn the Christian? Chastisement, sometimes chastisements, well, sometimes before the chastisement come. How does He warn you? Warn me. Warn us. Through? The Holy Through the Holy Spirit. How? Holy Spirit, talk to us? Obviously not. Using? Using what? How does the Holy Spirit convict us? Using the? The Word, right? The Word. You do your devotion. Oh yeah, this one. I, I don't, don't, I hurry up, turn the page. Have you experienced that? Oh, don't, don't do it, don't do it. And then you come to church. And you say, ah, finally church. Then the message is about your sin. <laughs> you know? And the person don't even know. And say, ah, I don't hear, don't hear. Okay. Ah, I know how I sleep. <laughs> right? Then you go out, and then someone else talks to you, and all the times. Why does God do that? God will use His Word first, understand that? God will use His Word. God will keep showing you again and again. Uh, like, like, like Uncle Howard will say, Caleb, I told you once. Caleb, I tell you twice, right? Then before, no, <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> Straight away you get it. Even parents will say, I, I warn you first, I warn you, I warn you, right? I warn you, I warn you. Then finally, if you don't listen, finally the parent will act, correct? No parent came straight away. Okay? So, God will use His word, warn, warn. God will send preachers, just like the Old Testament, right? In the book of Judges, God keeps sending prophets to warn Israel. Israel, don't want to repent, don't want to repent, don't want to repent. What happened to Israel in the end? Anna, Israel got football. Got what? Got kicked out of the land. Too late. Too late. They want to serve God, also no use. So God is merciful. God is a loving Father. He keeps dealing with us. So when God deals with us, through His Word, through the Holy Spirit, what should we do? What should we do, CP? Repent. Repent. Don't wait till the cane comes out. Don't wait till the cane comes out. Sometimes when God chastises us, some of the chastisement will last for a long time and may be permanent in our lives. Understand that. So, young children, understand, when you keep not wanting to repent, God show you, you know, Danny and Mommy, God said Danny and Mommy to tell you, you come to church, you share it, and you constantly don't want to repent, one day God will take out the cane. And sometimes, the things that happen to you can stay with you for the rest of your life. Decisions that you make that will impact you for the rest of your life. Understand that? Do you want that? So you don't want God to deal with you, what do you do first? Repent quickly. Repent quickly. Isaac, what's repent? Use a pen and write again. Re? Yes. Huh? Ask, for ask for forgiveness. And then after you ask for forgiveness, continue in sin. No, what do you do? Stop sinning. Very good definition. Ask God for forgiveness and then look at the sin differently and stop. Okay? So can a true believer backslide? Yes. A true believer go to heaven? Yes. But it is not good. Means God say, you're a true believer, you backslide, you don't repent, I take you to heaven. <laughs> then you regret. Okay? So, yes, and the other one is also possible. It's also possible that the person was never a true believer in the first place. Now, will a true believer renounce God? Let me ask you. Um, Claude. Will the true believer renounce God? A true believer can backslide. Okay, young ones. True believer can backslide? Can. Is it good? No. Quickly repent. Otherwise, God will chastise you because God loves you. Can a true believer stop going to church? You know you're in sin, right? I don't go to church. I don't go to church. I don't go to church. But in your heart, you feel sinful. You know it's sinful. But can a true believer say, no problem. I can renounce God. Claude. No. 
Your child answer for you, so she like. <laughs> she giving daddy hint. No. Okay, daddy answer it. Ilim, why? Why you say no? Why you try to hint to your daddy no? Why? Why can why do you say a true believer will not renounce God? Because the he has the Holy Spirit. Alright? He has the Holy Spirit. No true believer will say, I don't believe in God anymore. Jesus Christ is false. I don't need this religion. I love my sin. Yes. What Question. About what about Peter? Alright, so what about Peter? What about Peter? Did, did Peter deny Christ? Peter denied Christ three times, right? Did Peter deny Christ? Did Peter de renounce God? So what do you, how do you answer? Enoch. Did Peter deny Christ three times? What? Three times or more? No hope already. Is it true? But was Peter saved? Peter was a saved believer, right? So in Peter's case, how come Peter... Oh, so, okay. Elim. Alright? The answer is, yeah, but Peter also denied Christ. Right? How? You want to ask your daddy? Okay, ask your mommy. How? How, Esther? Peter denied three times. Yes. Peter never denied that Christ is Christ and God. But he was fearful and he didn't want to say that he know him. And he said, I, I don't know him, I don't know him. But this one renounce, renounce. Mr. Enoch, what do you mean by renounce? Like you don't want do you don't want God? <laughs> so like you don't want God. Um, well, sometimes we are fearful, we may, we may be in weakness, deny Christ, all right, um, in fear. But in your heart, you always knew that Jesus Christ is God, what I'm saying is wrong. Right? That's why Peter all the while felt very guilty. Actually, there's a follow-up question about Judas afterwards. So in Peter's case, he's not renouncing in the sense, he said Jesus is not God, this is not the Son of God, forget about him, I have nothing to do with him. How do we know that? Shane, how do we know? Peter was not a case of renouncing that this is God, I have nothing to do with him, this is, this is not God, and he's a false person. He's a false prophet. How do we know Peter was not renouncing Christ in that way? How do you know? How do you know? We ask him first. Shane, army too long. <laughs> not sure. Okay, faith wants to help you. How? How do you know Peter did not renounce Christ as God? He preached the gospel, but that was after that. Yes, he got arrested and then he All right. One thing is for sure, later he preached the gospel bravely, like we studied in BBK this morning where he's willing to die for God, right? So he did not renounce it. That's why we know. Also at that time, did he run away? He still hung around. He still hung around. His heart is very convicted. He said those things he's afraid. But he did not say, huh, let me tell you what, i also go and whack his head. Right? Let me go and join the soldiers and beat up Christ also. In his heart, he knew. But this is talking about someone who said, really, I don't believe. So in a sense, you're right. Sometimes some people can, out of fear, Say, I, I, I don't believe, I don't believe. Out of fear. Were there martyrs who were like that? Were there, not mothers, huh? Martyrs. You know it's martyrs? People who died for the faith. There were some. They, 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 they would sign the paper and say, yes, I renounce what salvation by grace. Then later what? Later what did, the, what did the, those people do? They actually say, burn my hand. This hand that renounced God. Always in their heart they knew they were wrong and they repented. Okay? So, but there may be some that are true. A true believer even outwardly may fear, say some things, but in his heart he knows. I'm wrong, I must repent. But if in your heart you say, really, it doesn't matter, you know. I become a Christian, be Christian. I can be Buddhist, I can be uh, a Muslim, I can be an atheist, I can be uh, anything. It doesn't matter. Just another religion. 
then you that kind of renouncing you were never saved in the first place okay can or not you not can or not okay you not cannot can okay so a true believer if he backslide stop going to church and he may even say I don't believe in God but in his heart he knows one day he must return and better return soon God will deal with him he still knows Jesus is God and that's the only way to heaven will he go to heaven Enoch? he will good I'm glad you understand but if one who say really I really don't care it doesn't matter Jesus is not God it doesn't matter I just believe in another God will he go to heaven no answer your question okay very good adults any question oh what about this one yes it's possible I have friends who ever say I am a Christian even preach the gospel to me when I was in secondary school they went through all this all right the parents divorced he got very very upset and said how can God do this he got angry and he cursed God he stopped going to church and then after I got saved I preached the gospel back to him right? he's the one who preached the gospel to me and then he stopped going to church and said please don't talk to me about God God is false there's no such thing as stupid to believe in God and he was sincere really say it's false if God is God then these things will happen in my life that's why there's no such thing as God so don't be silly I'm sorry I told you all those things last time but to him it's like it's false then it was very sad later on I met him when I was in the in the army I was in the navy then he signed up in the navy then I met him and I preached the gospel to him say oh I'm a believer they say yes I, I believe Jesus Christ is God and he was a true believer he lived a good Christian walk by, by his fruits in the army so yes a person can initially be this then eventually get saved also possible so don't write a person off too fast and don't judge by outward judgment alone help the person continue to help the person but you in your heart make sure you are a true believer understand that okay you all all this here you come to church the young ones grace all these young ones you come to church why do you come to church because daddy and mommy come to church no why you come to church then you want to know God very good all right it must be that it's not because daddy and mommy come to church so I come to church then I'm going to heaven no all right so very good okay so answer this question now the question is about adults any question yes Mm -hmm. People, they do believe I have the postmodernist thinking. Okay. So, what about like today's message on postmodernism? Postmodernism, they have a postmodernism thinking. Okay, the young ones were not in, in there. Postmodernism is a philosophy, a way of thinking in the world that has changed the way Christians think about God. Okay, that's what postmodernism is. Can a person who has postmodernism thought be saved? What do you think? Sing Yuan. Yuan, right? Yeah, Sing Yuan. Can a person with postmodernism means a person says there's no absolute truth? Well, it depends on situation and culture. And well, the Bible says this, but it don't necessarily mean that. Can such a person be saved? Cannot. Maybe I answer this way. Maybe I ask some more. Ask adults. Uh, which adult I haven't asked. Phyllis, what do you think? Can a postmodernism mentality Christian be saved? It still, applies. It, it's, it still applies to this principle. So, on what situation can this person be saved? Okay, after he replanted, but he did not replant. He did not repent. He still say some things are not true. What do you think, Ben? You understand this morning's message? Okay. Uh, I think he believes in the underlying principle that Christ died for his sins and that that truth is none other than what it is and still is. Okay. So I tend to agree with that. Now, if a person who has post postmodernism ideas, uh, ideas, but in his heart, when it comes to the fundamental doctrines of the faith, Jesus is God. He came physically. He died, born of a real virgin, died, physically resurrected and went to heaven. 
and he is forever sitting in the right hand of God. He is God Himself, and that um, the Bible well cannot because Bible, the Bible to him he, be, he believes these fundamentals as true, but he may be all the while in church taught by bad pastors that say miracles are not real. It's just stories, all right? But he truly believed and put his faith in Jesus as God. But he views miracles as maybe stories. He might be safe, okay? He can be safe. Because over time, then he will begin to realize, oh, but this is wrong. I begin to realize this is postmodern thoughts. I denounce it, like you say, in time they know. How many of you used to be from, Christ from charismatic church? Wow, so many. From charismatic church. From what you understand of salvation now, do you believe you were saved when you were in the charismatic church? Not sure. You, you definitely know you were not saved. Because you don't even believe, you don't even know you must repent. You must ask God to forgive you. God is love, that's all. So now, people in charismatic church can be saved. People who may have some wrong ideas because they were taught by the church since the time they put their faith in Christ. They might be saved. But if the person denounced Christ as God, denounce all the fundamental doctrines, it is unlikely that the person can be saved because you don't even believe in Jesus, the right Jesus Christ. Okay? So maybe. We can't tell. That's why I just preach the gospel to them. Okay? Did I say anything that is confusing? No? No? So remember the true believer, get out of your backsliding. God show you a certain sin. What do you do? Kill up. Quickly do what? Quickly repent. Why? If not, God will, in time, do what? Cornelius. Chastise you. You don't want to wait till then. Now, sometimes, let me ask you. What is the most frightening chastisement? Justin. <laughs> Too much lunch. What is the most frightening chastisement, Justin? You... When what? You think that it is true, but it is not. What, what, what happens then? God has done what? God has left you alone. The most frightening chastisement is to say, Hey, nothing wrong, what? I keep sinning, huh? You know, I'm a believer, I really believe in Jesus. Hey, I backslide, I choose to sin, but nothing seems to happen. I still pass my exam, I still do well, and, and so on, right? Everything is going well. Hannah, what Anna? What do you think? What do you think? Are you happy that way? Why? God says I don't I leave you to what you want to do. When daddy and mommy, would you rather okay listen carefully, huh? Would you rather daddy and mommy get angry at you, cane you, and talk to you? Or would you rather daddy and mommy say I don't care, you do whatever. You go to shopping, alright? <laughs> I don't want, I don't want. Then mommy say, oh, don't want. Ah. Okay, bye bye, I see you all. Yeah, you got the car, start the engine and go home. Would you rather that or daddy and mommy stand in the shopping center, scold you, cane you? Which one you prefer? Phoebe, which one? Daddy and mommy say, okay, bye bye, never mind, leave her. Okay, okay, I'll leave you, I go home. Which one you prefer? Daddy and mommy cane you and scold you or daddy and mommy just leave you alone? Daddy and mommy, yeah, remember. Huh? <laughs> Which one? The first one. You rather, at least you know, daddy and mommy care about you. Still standing there and scold you and correct you, right? Then daddy and mommy say, okay, la, then whatever, I go off. La. See you, bye-bye. Right? It's very painful, it's very scary. Understand that? So, when your life is going good, God in His mercy may be leaving you, trying to call you back. But you ask whether God has just said, I let you have what you want and what will happen? You'll fall into sins which later on in life you will regret. Now you're young, you don't understand. You think this is very nice, but later on you will really regret. Will you regret? Have you known of people like that? Brenda? No. Too young. Older ones. Eugene? Have you known of people, Christians who say, I want, I want, I want, I want. And then after that, later on in life, really regret. Doing what? Give up 
things happen in your life that have consequences, you can never turn back. Some consequences you cannot turn back. Understand that. Some consequences you cannot turn back. God may give you a sickness that will remain for the rest of your life. Understand? Yes, you repent. As long as you repent, God will draw you back. But now you have to bear with that consequence. Understand? You have to bear with the consequence. You understand, Jeremy? What's the meaning of bear with that consequence? Say again? You have to live with it. And it's very painful. Sometimes it's health. Sometimes it's health. Sometimes it's some choice you made, then you have to suffer the consequences. Right? What other areas that you can think of? Vincent? What are the choices that young people can make that after that the consequences is just too painful? Work in KFC. No. <laughs> when KFC is good, get lots of free chicken. But you eat too much, then your consequences are big stomach. Uh, maybe uh, they, they ruin other people. They ruin other people's life, could be. Could be parents can make a wrong choice, and after that your child's life gets ruined, and then every time you look at that, your 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 heart aches. Okay, so make choices very carefully. That's the point. Okay, so so thank you, Enoch, for the question. Any other questions from adults? Repent, repent. Okay, one last question. Um, we all had lunch, right? Okay, so ten minutes. The next one, and then we are done. So this person asked, Justin, you ask. Where is it? Now Justin asks about about Judas, which I lost. Justin asks about Judas. So the person asked, Justin, can you ask your question, please? While well, I look for it. Uh, Say again. Where is it? Can you talk louder? Like like faith like that? <laughs> yes, please. Your question was? It was a good question. You don't remember the question though. You remember but you don't know where. Means you don't remember. <laughs> Okay, his question is this. You don't be postmodernist, huh? <laughs> I remember, but I don't remember. <laughs> Either you remember or didn't remember. Now, then Judas, which betrayed Jesus, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and bought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Matthew 27 3, quickly. Matthew 27 3. Matthew 27 3. Matthew 27, 3. Now, before we read Matthew 27, 3, yeah, I want to say one thing to answer um, Philly's question. To answer Philly's question. Okay. Now, listen carefully. Postmodernism, modernism, postmodernism is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Understand that. I don't want to give you the, this, this illusion that you can doubt God's word and all that and go to heaven. You better be very, very careful. If seriously you doubt and you begin to say, actually this one don't have to be true, this one, this one has errors, that's a very big question mark on your salvation. Okay, so I, I want to clarify that. It's different when you're not taught. When you're not taught, you do not know. And then after today's message, you begin to realize, hey, I'm a postmodernist. And you change. Okay, versus uh, this postmodernism thing, I think the postmodernism is correct. Church is wrong. Then you have to doubt your salvation. Okay? It's a very dangerous concept. Postmodernism. Alright, so I just want to make that clear. Huh? Now, so Matthew 27, shall we read together? 1, 2, reading. 27 verse 3. 1, 2, reading. Amen. Then Judas, which betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Now, so Justin's question is, is Judas Iscariot saved or not? 
it, is Judas Iscariot saved or not? Okay, so Shane, you have the privilege to answer your brother's question. Because he say, you look at the Bible verse, huh? look at the Bible verse. Judas, which betrayed Christ, saw that Jesus was condemned, he felt very bad. So he repented. And he even went back to the, to the chief priest and said, Nah, 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 you're 30 pieces. I don't want already. Right? So, your brother asked. He repented. He even do the works of repentance. So, is Judas saved or not? Hmm? Yes. So, Judas, he said, because he repented. The Bible says he's repented. And the Bible says he returned the money, right? So, Judas is saved. Who says Judas is not saved? Hey, so many. Oh, you come back only around against you. <laughs> so many. Now, yeah, this verse alone seems, seems like... Okay, I can put that. <laughs> now, this verse seems like he's safe, right? He, he, how many of you, after that, feel very bad, repent, even going to return the money? Some of you say, hmm, keep it. Now, he, he did all that. So, that's why um, Justin asked. And the brother also says, sounds like safe, right? Now, let's turn to um, John chapter 17, verse 12. John 17, verse 12. So, other parts of scriptures tell us something. John 17, verse 12. John 17, verse 12. Shall we read together? John 17, 12, reading. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost. But the son of perdition, that scripture might be fulfilled. Shane, who is this son of perdition? Will be Judas. Alright? So God says, so Jesus Christ says, Father, all these twelve, I did not lose a single elect. All the eleven. But the son of perdition, G, uh, Judas himself, he is lost. Not because Jesus could not, could not save him. Huh? But he is one of those that are lost. Okay, so Judas is not saved from here. We know. We know that Judas is not saved. Um, so how do you explain repented himself? Now this word repent is used to also mean that the person feel bad, now think different, uh, now basically want to do something else. Change his mind. Repent, change his mind. Okay? Does not necessarily mean the person repented unto salvation okay now he felt very very guilty sometimes I think he feel more guilty than many of us he felt so guilty what did he do he felt so guilty what did he do what did he do yes he killed himself how did he kill himself he hung himself he went to hang himself right His repentance was, he had sorrow, but he had what kind of sorrow? Anyone know? Susan, what sorrow? He had worldly sorrow. He did not have godly sorrow. He had the sorrow that just made him despair. How do we know that he was despair? He was so sorrowful, he despaired until what? he commits suicide. Correct? Now, what kind of sorrow is work, work repentance? What's the difference between Judas and Peter? Now the question. One was sorrow unto repentance. Ju Peter was very sorrowful. In his heart, he repented. He was ready to repent. The moment the Lord says, feed my sheep, he was so happy, right? That he has been restored. Correct? But did Peter say, ah, I'm so sad. I denied my Savior three times. And he's just a young girl. How can I be such a coward? Now I shall go hang myself. He did not, right? In his heart, he's hoping very much. He knows he was sinful. He hoped that God forgive him. But Judas went to commit suicide. He had, in his heart, there is no hope. He did not turn to God. He just committed suicide. That's the difference. Okay? That's the difference. Alright, so, um, and, and furthermore, the Bible tells us that Jesus said, this is the lost one. He's not a believer in the first place. Can a believer, now this is the warning, can now Judas was just like the 12 apostles, correct? He traveled with Jesus. He did many things with Jesus. He was just like another apostle. 
but yet he was not a what believer? Ben, he was not a he was not a true believer. So please search your heart. If you sin and you hide sin, Judas hide sin very well. What sin did Judas hide? Frank, do you remember? What sin did Judas hide? He betrayed Jesus. He betrayed Jesus. But Judas was, what was he in charge of in the 12 apostles' band? Remember? No. Anyone? He was in charge of what? Grace. Uh, Elim, what was he in charge of? What was Judas in charge of? Washing the toilet. No. <laughs> What's in charge of? Money. Why you say so softly? Money. Judas was in charge of the money bag, correct? And he was not honest. Correct? You can be just like a Christian, but actually in your secret life, you commit all these sins. As long as people don't know, you think you are safe. You have better check your salvation. There's no conviction in Judas. Okay? He's a cheater liar and so on but just like an apostle hey hello it's not like us in church no he was walking among the apostles with jesus so please make sure you're a true believer i really ask if not you say god i do not know but please forgive me of all my sins please save me today i want you to be my god and savior i repent of my sin please save me make sure you're a true believer all right don't pretend you pretend who do you fool who do you fool you fool yourself do you say yourself? I'm going to voice sound like a man. <laughs> Someone say yourself. Who says yourself? I did. Oh, you say you're, you're yourself, but her mouth will exactly the same time. You say, yeah, I'm going to voice like that. <laughs> your voice. When you say, then he spoke out loud. You say, yeah, I'm going to voice like a man. Okay, you fool yourself only, all right? You only fool yourself. But when you wake up, you wake up in hell, like, like Judas, right? Okay, so Judas was not a true believer. His repentance was not unto salvation, was just a worldly repentance. Okay? Alright? So that's all the time we have. Now, someone asked, what is the difference between psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs? Someone also asked, can we just have instrumental music? Can, can we worship God with instrumental music?